You know, <laughs> the whole thing about sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me is a bunch of nonsense. Words matter. They matter. And they matter how they are spoken. And even the tone. Parents sometimes uh, abuse their power on an emotional level. They just know how to manipulate and to make things get done. Sometimes that abuse of power uh, moves to a physical level. If you're not going to do what I tell you, I'm going to beat it out of you. Or beat you into it. Friends, that's not Christ. That's the old pagan way of doing it. The way of Christ, yeah, is discipline. But it is, it is discipline with, with love. And we don't move into that physical realm of abusing our power. Probably the ultimate abuse of power is sexual. Far too many young girls, young boys' lives are ruined, are scarred because of their parents' abuse. About 25 years ago, in the small church where I was pastoring, in, in various conversations that I would have uh, with, with grown women in the church, women in their 30s and 40s, would tell me how they had been abused as girls by a brother, by a father, by an uncle, by whoever. And it got to the point where I thought, man... Is there anybody that hasn't been? Don't abuse your power. Because it can be destructive on catastrophic levels. The next one, the next don't is don't let the persona rise above the person. Our persona is who we project to the world. It's, it's the kind of person that the, other, that the world sees that, that we present. Now, I often go back to, uh, I often go back to, to people in law enforcement because uh, stereotypically they have a persona that they project. It's confidence. It's it's uh, it's in control. It's um, it's it's kind of a, a bigness, even if they're small. And it's a persona that's it's kind of a tough individual that really isn't moved by too much. Uh, we're, we're really they're teddy bears. And once you find out, it's it's kind of fun to watch. Sometimes, some people, sometimes Christians, project a persona. And I've seen it many times. Project a, a persona of, of kindness and, 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 and generosity and, and goodness and, and kind of this, uh, you know, wow, magnanimous spirit. But at home, they're mean spirited, sometimes vulgar. Sometimes demeaning, tight-fisted, and the person is nothing like the persona. Guess what that does to our Christian witness among our children? Now granted, there's things we do at home that we're not going to do out in public. <laughs> Nobody wants to see what you sometimes do in private. Or what you look like in private. But when there is such a disconnect between the persona and the person, 
What damage is done to family as well as to the Christian faith, at least the reputation of the Christian faith. Don't let that disconnect. Let your, let your, let your person, who you are, be as close to your persona as possible so that what you are on the outside is also what you are on the inside. The third don't is don't live your dreams through your child. Too many children have suffered at the hands of parents who are either jealous of their abilities, their children's abilities, or trying to fulfill their dreams through their children. You know, how many children have, have grown up and become the, something that they have uh, taken on as a career, something that they have no gifts for, no abilities for, no desire for, but it's simply because it was expected of them. How many children, how many families have been torn up because a, a father or a mother put, put unrealistic expectations on their children? Well, I couldn't succeed. Maybe you can. Well, here's some news. Flip the page over. The first one is do provide an example worthy of You know, the golden rule really ought to start at home. It really ought to start where we live. We really ought not to treat those that we, in such a way that around us, that we, in such a way that we would not want to be treated ourselves. You know, basic respect and treating family members right. So just, you know, be what you say you are if you're a Christian. Be what you say you are. Provide an example that's worthy of imitation. Transition from control to influence. Now, now, when children are young, we can and we have to exercise control. I mean, there's just some things that children cannot, must not do. That's just the way it is. But as they grow older, we have to transition. Control is, is replaced by influence. You know, trying to exercise too contr control rather too long is an insult to our training. You know, we've spent years, decades, well, maybe not decades, one decade or a decade and a half trying to teach a child how to live, and, and yet we don't trust what we've taught them. Control to influence. And it's a bumpy road. It's a terrible road sometimes. But it's a road that we travel. Pity the poor adult child who still is told what to do and how to do it. In a demeaning way, no less. And the third one, the final one, is blend discipline with encouragement. When do you scold and when do you laugh? Benjamin West is an artist. And he credits his, his, his going on, his, his being an artist to his mother. One day when Ben West was, uh, uh, you know, old enough to be left alone to watch over his little sister, his mother went out and did some errands, whatever, you know, you do. And so he was in charge of watching over his little sister. His sister's name was Sally. And so he got the idea that, you know what, I am going to paint a portrait of Sally. And so he found some paints somewhere in the house. And he went to work, found a piece of paper, and drew a picture of his little sister, sort of. But in the process, he created this absolute mess. 
And so his mother came home, and guess what? What was going to happen? She walked in the door, looked at the mess, looked at Ben, looked at his sister, looked at the picture, and said, oh, why that's Sally. And she walked over and kissed him on the head. And then they cleaned up the mess. He says, I am an artist because of my mother's kiss. When do you scold and when do you laugh? When do you ground and when do you let it pass? You see, constant scolding and punishments eventually ends up in a, well, who cares anyway? 